If you haven't already watched part four of our dining room renovation, you should go back and watch that before this video because we're picking up right where we left off and we left off with Ben working on the wood around this pipe in our dining room. He got the first piece up because it was busted and it honestly needed to be replaced. So we do end up replacing that with a new one, but the rest of these, they were nailed down and he was afraid of breaking them more than they already were. So we decided to just leave them and he ended up hand sanding them and getting all of the old paint and stain off of them that way. This is the door casing leading into our kitchen and it should have honestly been refinished whenever we did our kitchen but I didn't think about it at the time so we are finally refinishing it with the dining room and all of this paint has got to come off first. So I finally finished peeling the paint on this door frame and it looks so much better. It of course has burn marks in it and I still do not know if we're going with paint or stain. We're waiting on the floors to see how they pull but every door had a little bit of paint on each side of it which this facing side it won't matter because trim will cover that i just had to work on getting that side but out today is the day that i'm gonna get all this cleaned up i've got the wallpaper already wiped down so there if you don't know if you hang wallpaper usually there's a little bit of glue marks on the seams and stuff that it just makes it shiny so i cleaned all of that off and the wallpaper is done but now i need to go through and clean everything really, really well. So this, the fireplace and the cast iron pop, I have to re-clean that. And honestly, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a, another coat of polish on and then buff it out again, just because I did notice a few rust spots coming through on the fireplace whenever I was wiping it down yesterday. So I'm gonna do that today. And then the window over there, I do have to clean it really good. This one I already cleaned, but it really needs wiped down again. But pretty much anything that may have dust on it in here, the lighting is really weird in here today because it's raining, but anything that may have dust on it has to be cleaned up and just swept in here really well. So I'm gonna do the shop vac first and then do the vacuum cleaner, which I started cleaning on the window last night and then quit because I had to have Ben come and re-brace the window because I don't know why, but they're really loose. So. He went and screwed them all back in better than they were and now it's perfectly fine. But I don't I don't know if somebody put them in wrong or what, but he had to re-screw the whole window in. And then after I get everything cleaned up and cleaned out of here, swept really well, then I'm gonna take water to the floor and see because when it, I did a test spot over there, kind of where that vacuum cleaner is, and red started coming through. It looked like the floor was like bleeding. And I need to see if that's going to do that all over the floor or what it even is. I don't know because I tried Googling it and it said tannins or whatever, like that we dealt with in the laundry room and the kitchen, but it is not that. Like if it's tannins, I have never seen any like that before in my entire life. So, and I don't know why it's red, but I do have to wipe down the floor just to get the dust off and prepped because tonight when Ben gets home, he's going to put this transition in. He worked on it last night, but didn't get it finished. He's going to put one piece of flooring in just to bring it out a little and then it's going to be a transition strip. So once he gets that done, then tomorrow I'm going to work on sealing the floors, hopefully. In the majority of the house, we do have just newer vinyl windows. I think we have like maybe four or five old original windows left in the house. I would love to go back with old original windows someday, but... It's just not the time right now because we would have to pay the extra money to get them made and we cannot find anybody in our area that actually does wooded windows because I wanted to get just new windows instead of them being vinyl they would be wood and nobody in our area makes them so we would have to hire that out and go out of town to get those. But for now there is nothing wrong with these windows so we are going to keep them in the farmhouse until they bust, break, or whatever, or until we just need new windows. If you saw my last video, I was really struggling with the wallpaper and trying to figure out how to hang it in the corners. And I actually saw one video on here on YouTube that made it all make sense for me as far as corners go. 
So I essentially just hung the piece up there and then cut it perfectly in the corner after I'd creased it. And then you just butt the piece right back up to it. But where our walls are not perfectly straight and the ceiling is not perfectly straight, you have to line up the pattern. And to keep that pattern straight, sometimes it would be overlapping a quarter inch. Sometimes it'd be overlapping half an inch. And then sometimes it'd be gapped. So you just have to push it together until it is level and you do have to use a level to do it, but it does finally work out. You just have to work with it until it looks decent enough to fool the eye because it is overlapping and it's not really supposed to overlap. But honestly, I think the biggest tip and trick of all is to just take your time whenever you're doing it. I ended up working on hanging the wallpaper. I think it was over four or five days and I would work on it for several hours every day until the very end at the very end, I hung at least like one and a half walls all in one day because I had finally learned how to do it and it was going so much faster. But you do have to go pretty slow with it because you do have to get pretty meticulous with it and be kind of particular with it unless it, you don't care about the gaps and cracks that you'll see. Because depending on your pattern especially, if you pick a bold pattern, that's kind of like why I went with something subtle. Because if you go with something bold, then you are going to see every single flaw. When I was choosing our wallpaper, I thought about what was in the kitchen and right now our kitchen is just really white and bright and I like that. But then I do want to add quite a bit of color throughout the rest of the house just because I wanted the kitchen light and bright because it is the smallest room in the house, but also it's the most used room in the house. So it needs to be light and bright in my opinion, but I wanted the dining room to kind of play off of the kitchen and I wanted the lighter tones in it. So that's why I picked what I did. But then I was very particular because I wanted something with a little bit of green in it and this paper does have a tad bit of green in it. That way I could go with something bolder because I think I want to go with a darker green color in our entryway. So I wanted those to be able to play off of each other and I have to think about that one step ahead because you can see into these rooms. So in my opinion, the rooms that you can see into from each other, they kind of need to go along with each other if that makes sense. Prepping the floors for polyurethane or whatever you're sealing your floors with is probably one of the most important steps. I would almost say it is more important than sealing the floors themselves just because if you do not prep your floors properly, you're going to end up with a lot of problems and usually the most common thing I see is people that don't clean their floors properly and they end up with a lot of dust stuck underneath their polyurethane and it'll almost look bubbly and I wanted to avoid that but then also where this is an old house and they had carpet, linoleum, and tons of other kind of flooring on the floor. We had a lot of dirt in the cracks and it wouldn't come out with the vacuum cleaner so we ended up having to dig it all out and a butter knife was the best thing that we found to use because it has to come out because whenever you're polyurethaning with the pad it does want to pull the dirt up so it's very important that you get the dirt out and that you prep your floors properly to make sure that all of the dust from sanding is off your floors the best thing to use is a wet rag that is lint free and just warm water and just wipe it over your floors a few times but make sure it thoroughly dries before you put any kind of sealer or oil on your floor so i just now finished digging all the dirt out of the cracks and got all that swept up while i was doing that ben worked on putting this transition in and he pulled these boards from i don't know why it's not focusing he pulled these boards from the upstairs bedroom the same place that he got the other replacement board and they should match perfectly because as you can tell they're green and then these are green so we're hoping they pull fine and in our kitchen i know it doesn't look green it looks brown and like yellow once it's sealed but it is green in there so like those two boards right there are green right. since i just now finished doing that i am going to go ahead and get a mop in a bucket and just lightly like mop the floor like not really mop it just very lightly get it wet to take all any dust off and i'll have to do it again tomorrow morning also but i also wanted to see if the red comes out anymore because right here is where i did a test spot so hopefully you can see i have no idea why this camera is not focusing but there's red dots that bled through i have no idea what's up with this camera but hopefully you can see in between the focusing 
I ended up not filming whenever I wetted the floor with just water and that was because my camera I have no idea what was wrong with it but it would not focus so I ended up just giving up for the night but I went ahead and wiped down the floors and that red spot did not come through anymore anywhere else in the whole room so I have no idea it has to be some kind of stain because if it was tannins then it would have all bled through if that makes sense not just one or two boards so to me it looks like they spilled something or I don't know something happened to the floor there and it's causing that to come up but whenever it was wet you couldn't really see the red so I decided to go on with polyurethaning it and we are using a satin finish I ended up doing a total of four coats even though in this video I only show one that's because I am staying up until midnight on Wednesday night doing this polyurethane so I'm actually editing this really late Wednesday night and you guys will be seeing it on Thursday but in order for me to get the video up I only got footage of one of the coats being applied but I did end up doing four coats and the way that this polyurethane it is polyurethane specifically for floors I've never used just regular polyurethane so I don't know and I wouldn't recommend it I've always used on our kitchen floor and this floor just polyurethane floors in the satin finish and we do really like it so far our kitchen floor has held up really really good and the floor looks like it is pulling so dark in this video which it did pull really really dark whenever we put that initial first coat on but wait until the very end of the video or if you just want to skip ahead go to the very end of the video like the last 15 seconds i'll put in a clip of how the floor looks after it has dried a little bit and it does not look near this orange in person. I don't know if it's the lighting or just it pulled that dark at first and then dried, but it almost matches the kitchen floor to a T. The only difference is in here in the dining room, there is yet less yellow boards. So we used a lot of yellow poplar in our kitchen because we didn't know what the other flooring was that they had mixed in in here in the dining room. So we went with poplar all over the kitchen floor and it is just different colors of poplar. So that's why the kitchen floor is especially yellow. But once this floor in the dining room does start to dry, it does pull yellow. So we are so happy with it and we're thankful we were able to match it that close because we weren't sure how it was going to look. But now that we see it, we are so glad that we ended up doing poplar in the kitchen and that we took the time to rip down and get salvage those boards from that old house that we got them from and refinish them. Here's how the floors looked while they were still wet after the first coat and that is why the floors still look splotchy is because some sections dry quicker and pull more polyurethane than others and this is how it looks after it has dried. This is still the first coat but it's after it's completely dried and you can see how much it toned down and we are so thankful it matched so close to the kitchen but that is going to be it for this video so thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe.